this is the beginner's guide to tracking macros. Guys, I'm gonna start a new series on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, wherever we post these videos, and it's basically gonna be the beginner's guide to blank. I wanna take time to use this new whiteboard I got and break down a topic for you for the beginner. See, there's a lot of people that watch my videos, they listen to my podcast, they read my blogs, they soak up all this information, and there's a lot of science involved in a lot of it. But sometimes that's not relatable or it's hard to translate to the beginner, the person who just stepped in the gym, the person who just downloaded a tracking app, the person who just figured out that they wanna set in and embark down a new journey to a new goal, and they don't know all the philosophies, they don't know the science, and they don't know how to, to interpret all of this information so it's simple and stress-free and they can actually see results. And most importantly, they can actually adhere to it because all the science and all the information in the world is pointless if we can't apply it. So that's what these series are gonna be about. The Beginner's Guide to Blank is gonna be an applicable video series so I can take a concept and I can teach you exactly how to make it simple, stress-free, and finally get results. This first episode is gonna be the Beginner's Guide to Tracking Macros. So today I wanna show you exactly what you need to know in order to successfully track your macros. We're gonna break down the five steps that you need in order to successfully diet using the macronutrient prescription protocol. Step one is pretty damn obvious. You gotta download the app first. So I only put two app examples here. There's probably more, but at the end of the day, my Fitness Pal and my Macros Plus are probably gonna work the best for you. They have the biggest database, they're the easiest to use, and they're the most well-known. They probably have the most money invested into it too, which is always gonna help because there's more backing up the information that's actually inside of it. I'm going to pick my fitness pal for you, the listener, the, the watcher, and for all of my clients, that's what I recommend. It's what I personally use. And the reason being is, honestly, I downloaded that first before I downloaded the Mac, my Macros Plus, so I've just had it for longer. But what I've noticed over time is that they have a very large database of flexible foods. This means that there's restaurants, there's different brands, there's a lot of variations, and there's a lot of different things added into this app so you have variety and you're not stuck to one option for chicken. There's a million different options. On top of that, they give you a verified check. I believe it's either a blue or a green check mark above the foods that are verified legit. So now I don't have to go into my fitness pal and pick an option which I don't know is actually legit. Some people will have to search a food in my fitness pal and then search it on Google and then try to match to make sure that everything is legit and everything is matching the nutrient facts that are accurate with that food. But my fitness pal gives you the check and that kind of lets you know this is a verified food. So step one in tracking macros and learning how to use the macro system to diet, you have to download an app in order to track. Step two. Simply track. This is the, the biggest component. A lot of people, they download the app, they wanna get right to macros. What should my macros be? How much protein should I consume each day? How should I break up my carbs around my workout? Don't worry about any of that stuff. This is such a new system for you. And as simple as tracking macros might be, you've never done it before. The last thing you wanna do when you're looking for fat loss, muscle gain, or any type of performance, body composition change, success, is to add too many habits in at one time. What you wanna do is take a week, to add in one habit. Now, downloading the apps takes two minutes. I don't ex expect that habit to be the first week, but the first week you can focus on one and two. You can download the app and then you can just simply track. Once you start tracking, what you're gonna notice is you're gonna have a lot more self-awareness. And what that means is you're gonna start noticing that you might not eat as healthy as you probably thought you were. You probably consume a little bit more sugar. You're probably eating a little bit more fat than you realized, so on and so forth. But Self-awareness precedes change. And what that means is that until you are self-aware of what you're doing now, you actually cannot physically change what you need to change in order to get to the result you wanna to get to. It's also gonna educate you a little bit on nutrient facts. This is just the food labels on the back of foods. A lot of people don't even know what to look for. What are they reading on the back of these? It shows you your fats, what type of fats are in there, your carbs, your sugar, your fiber, your protein, and then your ingredient list, which is actually listed in order of weight. So what you'll notice is if sugar is the first ingredient on a list of ingredients, that means sugar is the heaviest ingredient in that food, which means it's a highly processed, highly sugar consu consumed food. Probably not something you wanna eat, but without tracking first and educating yourself on these food labels and on these nutrient facts, you're actually gonna have no idea about all these things. And last but not least, consistency and adherence. Before we dial in your macros, we need to make sure that you can consistently track. That's it by itself. We need to make sure that you can actually track and you can stick to the goal of simply scanning the foods you eat, measuring your foods 
putting them into the app and actually tracking no matter where your macros are at. If you can't track in general, we can't expect you to be successful with a macro nutrition plan. And that's okay. It might not be for you, but the key here is simple. Step one is download the app. Step two, just track, give yourself at least a week and just see what you're doing right now. Build self-awareness, educate yourself and simply be consistent. Step three, find your maintenance. Okay. So we downloaded the app. We've been simply tracking. Now we have one week. I would suggest maybe even two weeks, depending on the person. Again, just to build that consistency, build a habit. We're not in a rush here. Get consistent with tracking your food. After you've done this, after you've built self-awareness and you've learned how to track your food for one to two weeks, you're going to find your maintenance calories. What this means is whatever you are taking in. So you're going to actually get your average caloric intake based on one to two weeks. So you're going to look on a piece of paper. I would literally write this down or bring it in an Excel sheet, write down your daily intake for seven to 14 days. Take those numbers and find your average calorie intake. So if your average calorie intake was 2,148 calories, that's your average caloric intake. We can round that to 2,150. Let's say your weight, because you've been basing that on weigh-ins and you're gonna correlate your average caloric intake with your weigh-ins, that's why I have this little graph here, you're gonna see, is your weight declining? Are you losing weight? Is your weight increasing? Are you gaining weight? Or are you maintaining your weight? We gotta find your maintenance calories. Usually what you will find is you found your maintenance calories because if you've never tracked before, you're probably not dieting, you're probably not adding any intelligent plan or periodization into your nutrition. That's why we're doing this system. If you're coming to this video to figure out how to track macros, you're probably not where you wanna be. You probably are somebody looking to build muscle and gain weight, or you're probably somebody looking to lose fat and drop some weight. If that's you, you're most likely maintaining your weight right now. So when we track your macros and we decide and figure out that you're consuming 2150, 2150 calories every single day on average, and you're maintaining a body weight of 200 pounds on average, this means that your maintenance caloric intake is 2,150. This step is very, very important. It doesn't take a long time. It's not one of those week long things like this, one to two weeks, but it is very important because this sets the stage. This gives us our baseline of where we are gonna adjust from. When we go into the next steps, we're gonna show you how to critique your nutrition and change your nutrition to elicit the change, whether that be fat loss or muscle gain that you want. But if we don't know where your maintenance calories are at and how many calories it takes you to not see any results to just stay put where you're at, we won't know where to take your calories. We won't know how to adjust your calories in order to get you where you want to be. Step four, we're going to set your protein and your calories. The reason we're doing this is because again, we want to keep things simple and we don't want to rush into the full spectrum. By the time we have all your macros laid out, you've already been doing this for anywhere between two to four weeks, which means you're going to be way more consistent. You're going to be way more self-aware. You're going to be way more ready to go into this and to actually stick to tracking all of your macros and actually dialing things in. You're gonna be committed to the process and that's very important when we get into these specific and individualized macro prescriptions. So step four with setting your protein and calories, those are the two most important concepts of calories and macros or body composition change, really just nutrition in general, to see performance enhancements or body composition change, whether we're talking about muscle gain or fat loss. Calories in versus calories out. That's going to be the biggest determining factor of whether you see changes with your performance in your body. And protein is going to be one of the most important nutrients to consume in order to support muscle growth, support recovery, support performance, support satiety, support a lot of different hormones, and support a lot of other things that are contributing to fat loss, muscle gain, or performance. Which is why we're going to prioritize protein and calories first. It also makes things a little bit easier because you don't have to worry about carbs and fats. We're going to set your protein and calories and your carbs and fats can go up and down as long as you hit your protein every day and you stay within your caloric intake. When we are setting our protein and calories, we're going to keep it really simple and do this by this small chart you see right here. For protein, we're going to stay between 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound. This is a big scale. The problem with this being in a video is tracking macros and individualizing macros is a very, very individualized process. I go through 30 questions with a client before I really decide how much protein and macros they're going to be consuming. What's your history like? How often do you train? How often do you sleep? What's your goal? What's your age? All these different things play into uh, how much protein you're going to take in, how many calories you're going to take in. The bare minimum is typically 0.8 grams per pound. Now, if you have 50 to 100 pounds to lose, you can err on the side of like 0.5 to 0.7 grams per pound because you have more fat mass to lose and that's okay. You just don't need as much protein. 
If you are pretty lean, 0 0.8 grams per pound is probably gonna be the bare minimum. For me, right now, I'm up in this 1.2 grams per pound, which is more than enough. I'm not getting much benefit from a muscle standpoint. I'm not building more muscle by consuming more protein. But right now, I'm on a diet. I'm in a deficit and I'm leading up to a photo shoot. Because of that, I'm hungry. Protein is the most satiating nutrient and it's damn near impossible to store as body fat. So it's not gonna harm me by eating a little extra, but it is gonna keep me full and it's not gonna cause weight gain through more calories. So during a fat loss phase, it might be smart to push a little bit higher than one gram per pound. But the point of this is simple. Anywhere in that range is gonna be where you're best at. So what I would do is take your average maintenance calories and average maintenance protein and go closer to that. If you're only consuming 50 grams of protein a day, but according to this and according to where your body weight is, you need to be consuming 1.1 grams per pound and that's a 120 gram jump, I probably would go 0.8 at most because you need to build the consistency and just kind of slowly build into more protein. You need to get there, but you can't do it overnight. Your gut's gonna be wrecked and it's gonna be really hard to stay consistent. So go slow and build up to around one gram per pound. Now, for calories, it's even more individual and it's an even bigger range. You see 10 to 14 times your body weight. That's strictly fat loss. So if you have fat to lose, you need to be somewhere in that range. If you have 50 to 100 pounds to lose, you can go with 10 times your body weight that's the lower range, but the truth is, is you're not gonna suffer metabolic or hormonal issues because you have a lot of weight to lose. So you don't need to have as many calories. Now, if you are a high intensity CrossFit athlete who has five pounds to lose and they're already pretty lean, I'm gonna have you easily at 14 times your body weight because you need more calories to support the type of training you're doing and you don't have a ton of weight to lose, meaning you probably have more muscle mass. 13 to 16 times your body weight. Again, a big range, but that's gonna be maintenance calories. So if you're watching this video and you actually don't wanna lose or gain, maybe you actually wanna stay put where you're at. You just wanna optimize your energy, your performance, maybe just gain health. You're gonna be in that 13 to 16 times your body weight range. And finally, if you wanna gain muscle or gain weight, you're gonna be in that 14 to 18 times your body weight. Now, going through those three calculations, they're very generic and I've had outliers in every situation. I've had women lose body fat on 18 times their body weight because they only weigh 120 pounds. I've also had people where I've put them on eight times their body weight because they have more than 50 pounds to lose. And as long as we're tracking biofeedback to make sure that they're not suffering sleep, they're not suffering from a hunger or a performance standpoint, fatigue standpoint, hormonal standpoint at all, then I'm okay with going a little bit lower, right? So we gotta take those factors into account. So now, We've had our maintenance calories and we've set our protein and calories. What you'll notice is one of two things, and this is very, very important. If your maintenance calories, let's go back to that example, 2150, 2150. You do the calculation, you go right in the middle, you, let's say you do 12 times your body weight, which is a pretty good and average healthy fat loss calculation to use. You end up with 2400. So you're already below what you should be at in order to lose fat. That tells me that you're actually under consuming protein, or sorry, under consuming calories, you're under eating in general. So we have one of two options. Number one, we can slowly reverse diet you. Number two, we can change the composition of your calories, or we can do both. And when I say change the composition of your calories, I mean going right to step five, not touching your calories, keeping where you're at right now, and tweaking your macros which we'll get to in a sec. The other situation would be that your maintenance maybe is 18, or your maintenance is 2150, but you did your calculations and you should actually be consuming 1800. Well, that means you have to cut 350 calories out of your caloric intake in order to meet that new fat loss calories. That's perfect. That means you're probably gonna see progress like that because we did the calculations, you saw that you were actually over consuming calories on a regular basis. Now you have room to cut. You don't have to cut too much but you have the tools needed in order to make a cut. So this is probably the biggest step out of all of them. So I just want to do a review real quick. We've taken our maintenance calories. Then we've found where our calories need to be. We've set our protein intake up and then we make the difference met. That might mean bringing calories up to support your hormones in order to fuel fat loss, or it might be actually bringing calories down in order to create the deficit needed to lose fat. And last but not least, it might actually just be changing your macros and keeping your calories where they're at. Step five is actually setting your carbs and fat. So now we're gonna take everything we've done and we're actually gonna set our macros. The problem with this is this is the most individualized process, the most individualized step that you could possibly do. 
And I do not like using percentages like seen in this little picture here, but because this video is very generic and we're going to be talking to a wide audience, I am going to talk about percentages here. Normally I avoid percentages because they're not truly individualized. Calories on labels and in, in food and in, in trackers are rounded. And what that means is if you're following 40% protein, 40% carbs, um, 20% fat, what can happen is you can actually have a different amount of carbs, fat, and protein every single day by a small amount. If I prescribe you a specific gram of protein, fats, and carbs, it's much more precise and I can adjust with that precision along the way to make sure your results are that much more specific. But again, because of this, I'm going to give broad ranges because that's the best way to use this for a wide variety audience. When we are setting carbs and fats, we need to first determine our goal. Is your goal performance in muscle or is your goal health and longevity? Now you'll notice I did not put fat loss in there. The reason I didn't put fat loss in there is when it comes to training and when it comes to macro ratios, I believe we should be striving for one of these regardless. Fat loss is a side benefit and a result of your calorie deficit. Studies have come out time and time again that shows if your protein is where it needs to be, it doesn't really matter where your carbs or your fats are as long as you're in a calorie deficit. You can be on a high fat or a high carb, low fat, low carb, whatever you wanna do, as long as you're hitting your protein and you're getting your calories where they need to be like we just talked about, you will see results, you will see fat loss or you will see muscle gain if, that's, if you're in a surplus. So fat and carbs don't really matter. Now where they do matter is performance and longevity and also adherence. What do you enjoy? If you look at tr your tracker for that first two weeks that you were just simply tracking, you will build self-awareness around what you tend to fall to. And I notice this with clients all the time. I have them track for at least five days before I start and I will see what they crave. If they're really high fat and naturally low carb, I will, I will talk to them about that. Do you crave those fatty foods? Do you not enjoy carbs or do you fear carbs and that's why you're staying away from them? Do you notice how much fats you eat? Is there a nutrient deficiency? It's a, is it stress-related craving? So we can kind of build this education around what you tend to flock to based on that. Now, if performance and muscle is your goal, higher carbs are probably gonna be the route. If you look at this ratio right here, I have 35% protein, 25% carbs, 40, or sorry, 25% fat and 40% carbs. This is a great ratio range for performance and muscle because you're getting a high protein amount which is more than enough to make sure you're you're getting your recovery demands and all the protein needs that you need you're getting more than enough carbs and you have a lower percentage of fat 20 to 25 percent fat is the bare minimum for neurological and hormonal needs and what that means is your hormones are going to be fine carbs are funny carbs are specifically for performance we need them to fuel high intensity workouts um, high volume workouts for bodybuilding but they are actually aging so the process of actually breaking down carbs causes us to age faster which is why if you don't care about performance and muscle you don't really need as many carbs maybe you care more about health and longevity then i would actually flip these go 25 percent uh, carbs and 40 percent fat you can optimize your hormones a little bit better you can double down on joint health and all these different properties that fats can provide you with and just make sure you're in a calorie deficit to lose weight. You got your protein needs, you got your needs based on whatever your goal is, your calories do the rest. So when we set carbs or fats, there's two things I will recommend in this video. Very, very simple, not very individualized, but it gives you a baseline to start from. And as you start tracking and as you start learning, or even as you soak up more content from me on my podcast, you can get my ebook, The Nutrition Hierarchy, which has all this very more detailed. You can learn what you need to have exactly from a specific gram amount per day. But for this video, we've set our calories, we've set our protein. Now we're gonna set our carbs and fats. We're basically gonna take our calories, what are left, and we're gonna split them up. Or you can just take your calories and you can break them up into these percentages. 35% protein regardless, 25% fat, 40% carbs if your goal is uh, muscle and performance, or if your goal is fat loss and you have the end goal of looking jacked and performing hard, and we can flip those 25% carbs, 40% fat, keeping 35% protein. If your goal is yes, fat loss with the calorie deficit, but mainly you just want to be healthy. You want to feel good, maybe have more productivity and focus throughout your day. And you're not really that worried about muscle and performance. All right, guys, that was the beginner's guide to tracking macros. As you can tell, it is as simple as I can break it down, and it's also as generic as I can break it down. The truth is, 
the people who are watching this video are coaches themselves, are men and women, are young and old, are busy and not busy, are training hard and not training hard, are doing cardio, not doing cardio, sleep a lot, don't sleep a lot. I can name a million different variations to create each individual watcher watching this video. And because of that, I had to keep it very simple, very generic. But I think that's the key with anybody getting into anything. If you went into something for the first time, you always want to keep it simple and you want to build habits. So you need to follow this five step system to make sure that you're doing things with as little stress and as much ease as possible. Because again, at the end of the day, if you can't stick with this consistently for not days, but months on end, none of it's going to work out. If you want more information on macros, maybe you're not a beginner or you watch this and you're coming back to it three months later and you're ready to take that next step. The smartest thing for you to do is to go check out my ebook, The Nutrition Hierarchy. I break down calories, macros, micronutrients, meal timing and frequency and supplementation, which are the five key components to the nutrition hierarchy. that are going to lead you to your goal, but I go a lot more in depth than I do in this video to get you the exact amount of food, the exact type of foods, and the exact system of planning your foods that you need to see the result that you want, depending on whatever that result is. So again, if you want more information on this kind of stuff, go check out my ebook, The Nutrition Hierarchy. Um, you can get that at boomboomperformance.com slash The Nutrition Hierarchy or somewhere in the description of this video. If you want more free content, go check out my website, boomboomperformance.com. We have hundreds of blogs. We have ebooks, podcasts, videos, you name it, it's on there and it's all for free so you, the listener, the viewer, the reader can get more information and get better results. I will catch you guys next time on the next beginner's guide and if you like this one and you want to see more of them, give this video a like, drop a comment and make sure you hit that subscribe button.